My mind is empty. I'm completely in the flow without any distractions. I keep getting further and further away from home. I'm not looking back. I'm going through the whole spectrum of emotions. My past no longer defines me. One lap, two lap, three laps. I just finished a 10 kilometer run, just six miles. In the beginning of 2023, I set out goals for this year. My bulking goal, my bench press goal for bodybuilding and my worst nightmare, running. I first set out this goal with zero experience, only hearing of David Goggins, so I gave it a shot. I knew absolutely nothing about endurance running and resorted to binging YouTube shorts about marathon preparation, nutrition, and training. A month later, I'm red-faced, panting, and one of the worst pains of my life, clocking out five minutes on the treadmill for my first run. I was on the verge of sprinting, running like an emu. It was an 11 minute mile and the next day I could barely get out of bed. Weeks pass by and I'm coping with excuses, but I finally gather the motivation to do something incredible. I'm on the treadmill, intimidating the other guys on the treadmill section once again. 15 minutes go by, one mile. 15 minute mile, how is that possible? That's walking speed. I'll tell you what's walking speed. My first run without a treadmill. My side is starting to cramp. It's not looking good. Car zooming by, my feet pounding on the concrete. I was sprinting fast. I'm sure someone interpreted me running away from a murderer. That's how fast I ran. Quarter of a block later, I did not run the rest of the mile. It took 20 minutes for me to finish. This will be the only full discipline guide you'll need. The tools and tactics will be based on my personal experiences and my interpretations of the book Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. It's my favorite book of all time and I've read it twice. I'm planning on rereading it as many times as I need. It's not a regular self-help book. It's a wake-up call. This is not a normal YouTube video and I guarantee that it will single-handedly change your life. I need your full attention and I need you to follow every single actionable step. Put this video on full screen right now and listen to it with all of your attention. I'm giving you all the tools you need, but you're the one that needs to implement it. Hey guys, welcome back to Aaron Place Fun Facts. This is the first thing that you need to do to start improving. It is to accept your current situation. I'm not talking about accepting who you are, accept everything, accept that, oh, it's not in your control and stay like that for the rest of your life. Acknowledge your bad hand because we all had something that life did to us which is completely unfair. Maybe it was abuse, disabilities, bullying at school. We all have our list of excuses. Write them down, acknowledge them, and accept them. For David Goggins, childhood was a nightmare. He was beat every day. He was verbally and physically abused. He was bullied at school. His life has just been complete trauma and look at where he is now. Every day, when you look at yourself in the mirror, maybe you're going to the bathroom to brush your teeth or shower, look at yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself. The most important conversations that you'll ever have with anybody in your life are the ones that you have with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. There is nothing to say but the truth because the mirror never lies. If you're out of shape and you see that in the mirror, it might be hard to accept, but you're out of shape and you have to take accountability for your actions. On this accountability mirror, the only person you'll be talking to is yourself, your mind. You know all your insecurities, you know all your best strengths and worst nightmares. List down everything on there. And remember, there's no accomplishment too small because we all have to start somewhere. When David Goggins had to lose over 100 pounds in less than three months, he still had to lose the first five pounds first. Even though those little tiny things seem insignificant, those are actually the most important. Now I need you to do an actionable step for me right now. Grab out a piece of paper or use your computer to write something down. List out three things that you hate doing, but you know that it's actually good for you. This is the number one most important thing that you'll get out of this video. So listen up. If there's nothing else you take from this video, take this. For me, it could be cold exposure, like very cold showers, ice baths. I can't do it anymore. Pause. Pause.
long distance running. Now I'm talking very long distance. Go for a 4 a.m. run. A few months ago, couldn't even run a mile without gasping like a fish on water. That's the thing, keeping you from your goals, setting the bar too low. Now I'm not saying to go add 50 pounds to your bench press one rep max, but you can do a lot more than you imagine. I could never imagine. I was running for hours, even a few weeks ago. Stay hard. And generally, any other hard physical activity that you have to push yourself to the limits. Now you have your list. I need you to do them every single day. Embrace the suck because this is your comfort zone. And this is the zone where you grow. This is the zone where your mind expands. So you have to get out of your comfort zone and challenge yourself. You never truly learn anything when you're comfortable sitting in your room, warm, nice clothes, dry. It's humid, hot, there's steam in the room. My body temperature is sky high and I feel like a blast furnace. It's pitch black outside and I've been here for an hour. I'm pretty sure someone pissed on the floor because there's a puddle this big. One, that was pretty easy. Two, three, what if? Four, five, how am I running a half marathon later this year if I can't do this? Six, seven, hundred, and fifteen push-ups. Two days later, their faces are in complete shock. I'm in China, in my dad's apartment, with my family. I told them that I did 700 push-ups. Faced my demons, bro. The look in their eyes when you take a person's soul. Later that day, I did 1,035 more. Bonus by doing the last 35 push-ups in a row after a thousand. Taking souls is the normal human being in your situation would crumble. You rise above the normal human being. It makes them feel lesser. Therefore, you own a part of their soul. You put yourself in an environment that most people won't succeed in and you thrive in that environment. You absolutely live in it. It's when you use negativity to better yourself. Your teacher handing out the test, study hard and take your teacher's soul. Go for a 10 mile run and see some degenerate kids at the park with who knows what on the other side of their phone. Oh, send it to me, I'm gonna post it on my story. I was running in laps and I kept seeing them getting sweatier and sweater each time. When someone's looking at you on a run, let's say, don't visualize them judging you. They're doing the opposite. Close your eyes right now. Like, seriously, close your eyes and imagine this. You're sitting on a white foldable plastic chair standing on grass, watching endurance athletes running around a one mile track. It's a 24 hour race where you have to run 100 miles. Visualize their eyes, the look in their soul, peeled back to the bone. You can run for 24 hours, but one second, maybe one millisecond is all it takes to end it all. In 24 hours, there are a lot of seconds. Most people don't give up their hopes and dreams in one second though. Six miles in, I asked my siblings to refill my water bottle and get a banana while I chug the rest of my water bottle. Dinner time, Aaron, they left. Now I'm all alone. I ran laps around a course that circles my house and a nearby park. I ran that 12 times, each time giving me a chance to quit. People quit after hours of thinking about it. Do the opposite. Visualize what this success will feel like. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Cookie jar. It's a jar full of cookies. It's a reward system that your mom uses. When you act nice, you can dip your hand in a cookie jar. Sometimes you get Chips Ahoy, sometimes you get Oreo. Stock up your mental cookie jar of accomplishments. My mind has two states. When my physical body is relaxed, my mind opens up and it's time to work. When I'm in physical pain, my mind closes down, shuts up, and just does the work. But transitioning from the open, relaxed mind, relaxed body work mode into the exercise mode takes some time. For a lot of us here, that's when it's most painful. When I did a thousand push-ups, zero to a hundred was a lot harder than 400 to 500. 
When times get tough, reach into your cookie jar, and no matter where you are at life, you can always find some accomplishment. Like I said, there's no accomplishment too small. When times get tough, you can actually use that to refuel yourself. Quiet sound of static rumbling. This red needle dancing back and forth, back and forth. The world is moving fast. It's coming closer, closer, and it reads 110 kilometers per hour on a white sign. I look back at that red needle. It's on 120 kilometers per hour, but the maximum that it can go is 220 kilometers per hour. For obvious reasons, we wouldn't want people driving at 220 kilometers per hour. So we invented the governor, a device that limits the amount of gas burned in a car. Remove the governor and watch your car turn into a bullet train. Seriously. Just like how the governor in your car prevents the car from breaking down, the governor in your mind prevents you from experiencing pain. But like we said before, pain is good for you. Remove the governor. You've got a lot more in you. Which brings us to the 40% rule. Most human beings live at 40% of their maximum potential. How did I go from 150 push-ups in China to 715 with no training in between? I completely destroyed my expectations of what was humanly possible and gave it my all. When you're tired, you're miserable, you're sweaty, it's dark, and your body is giving out, your mind is screaming to stop, you're about 40% of your potential. When you're running and you feel like you can't anymore, can you take one more step? I don't know if you can take two, three, 10,000, a million more steps, but that's something you'll figure out after the first step. I simply cannot put into words how much is left in your tank. That's something you have to go and figure out yourself. We're in an era of which discipline outworks talent. In fact, I think discipline outworked talent since the dawn of humanity. David Goggins ran 160 kilometers with no training, with a hole in his heart. He was born with a heart defect that limited his cardiovascular strength to about 50%. We thought that running a mile under four minutes was impossible, but when the first athlete to run a three minutes and 59 minute mile broke the world record, not only did he shock the world, but he opened a floodgate to what's humanly possible. A few weeks later, that record was broken. Nowadays, there's been hundreds of athletes who've reached the sub four minute mile. Failure is seen as a bad thing, but no, failure is empowering. Failure is awesome. We have a term in the gym, it's called muscular failure. It's when you do an exercise for an amount of reps that you literally physically cannot anymore, that your muscles can not output any more energy. And it's a good thing. Every lifter will tell you that you have to train to failure. Everyone's chasing failure, even though the word is perceived as a bad thing. The only way you lose is if you quit. So failure is really just pushing yourself to the limits. That's where you truly grow. When someone or yourself doubts you, ask them one question, two words, what if? Thanks for watching this video. Like if this video has helped you. Comment if you have any questions. Subscribe to join the movement.